Hi everyone, this is Lahir from ABC's of Anesthesia and I'm an anesthetist in Melbourne in Australia. Now today I'm going to go through epidural neuraxial anesthesia. Obviously this is a really important technique in terms of analgesia for labor, but as well as anesthesia and post-op analgesia in a lot of your high-risk cases. Today I want to go through a whole bunch of stuff including the aims and indications, so the setup and preparation. I want to go through a lot of detail on the technique and also show you what the technique looks like with the skin removed so you can really see what the anatomy looks like and how this technique can be challenging. I'll try to go through a few of the troubleshooting things for the difficult epidural and finally how to dose the epidural to say labor, anesthesia, and analgesia. So let's get started. So for the epidural, essentially, I don't want to go into the intrathecal sac. I want to go past the ligamentum flavum into the epidural space. So essentially, the layers that I go through are skin, subcutaneous tissue. I go then th past the supraspinous ligament, the interspinous ligament. And I, when I contact lig ligamentum flavum, you'll feel a bit of resistance. As you go through the ligamentum flavum with your epidural needle with saline, you'll then get a loss of resistance that saline into the epidural space with the 2E needle. So this kit is an epidural mini pack by Portex. So just to open it up, here I have a loss of resistance to the syringe, and I put about four or five mils of saline into that. I've got the epidural 2E needle. Now this is a 16 gauge, but often I'll use an 18 gauge for most of my procedures. So I'd pretty much never use a 16 gauge. 18 gauge is absolutely fine. It comes with an epidural catheter. A filter. This wing I apply to the needle and that allows me to have better traction. This is to help thread your catheter onto your needle and this is something to lock it into place. The very first thing I do is I flush this catheter. The way I do that is I need to insert it into this locking mechanism and clasp that shut. I place the filter needle on with its lure lock there and then put the syringe with saline and just flush that catheter. You'll see saline flowing out of the tip. Just like that. Saline flowing out of the tip. Now you can't leave this on otherwise you won't be able to thread the catheter. So I put the nib of this in there and that allows me to open and free my catheter. First of all, I line everything up as I'm going to need it. So I need my local anesthetic with ligand cane 1% first. I then will use my epidural needle with saline. After I found the space, I'll need this to thread the catheter and then this will attach onto the end of the catheter. Now it's really important to know what these markings mean. So for example, the very first marking on an epidural catheter is five centimeters, then each other marking is one centimeter. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The two marks together are it means ten. Three together is fifteen, and then four is twenty centimeters. So it's really important to know that. So that's one of the subtle things about this catheter. Also, there's a blue tip. So you know that when you remove the catheter at the end of the case, if there isn't a blue tip, that would make you concerned that there was some part of the catheter left behind. It's also important to note here, the epidural needle is often eight centimeters for the average needle. So the first time you see a dark line, that's at three centimeters. And then each mark is four centimeters. So that's four, five centimeters, six, seven, and eight centimeters. This is probably another three centimeters. So up to the hip is about 11 centimeters. So just like with a spinal anesthetic, what I do is I locate the appropriate space, iliac crest that leads in the midline to the L4 vertebral body, and I'll just go below that. And as I showed you before, I'll inject some local anesthetic and try to find the space and leave that needle in. I then take this out and put it into the sharp safely. And then I insert this okay. 
until I get down to about three or four centimeters and make sure that I'm in that ligament. At that point, I remove this stilette and that you know, stops any skin particles getting into that needle. I then apply my syringe to the end. Now, there's a few different techniques on how to do this. Often I see people pushing with one hand and then applying pressure, constant pressure through this. I, I find that there's a probably a simpler technique, and that's to simply hold and balance the um, epidural needle with this hand and apply pressure just very gradually with this. And as you can see there, once I get lots of resistance, at that point, I'm in the epidural space. I then look at my needle to find out exactly where I am. So that's eight, seven, six, five. So I'm about 4.8 centimeters, five centimeters. I then take this off and I'm ready to thread the catheter. At this point, I'm reassuring the patient that we found the space. I put this on to help thread the catheter. Now, that was 10 centimeters, so I need to be at least about, you know, over 11 centimeters, so almost 15 centimeters before I can start threading the needle out. And so, as you can see, it's already come out a little bit, which is fine. I thread that out. And at this point, I now want to secure that, like so. How much catheter do I leave in the space? So we had space about five centimeters. So I generally go down to about nine to 10 centimeters. So there should be about four or five centimeters of catheter left in the space. So let's say we keep it at around nine and a bit centimeters there. At this point, I stick this down with tegaderm and ensure the edges are covered with another sterile dressing. I can have the catheter then running up the patient's back just like that, so we can bolus dose as we need. So I'm gonna do this demonstration again, but without the skin layer, so you can see exactly what's happening. So imagine I put local anesthetic into the skin. I then take that spot. Now what's new with ABCs of anesthesia is that we're forming a whole bunch of very comprehensive courses for every stage of your anesthetic journey from medical student to procedural skills from foundations in anesthesia as well as really important exam lectures and clinical anesthesia courses as well.